The sermon uh, evolved many times over the course of the week. If you looked at the signboard out there, it said pitons. Do you know what those are? The rocks, when you rock climb, you pound them in and they attach person to person and you go up. Then it went to all in, which was, seemed very appropriate and still is reflected today. And then finally, I settled on the way forward. <laughs> A little schizophrenia going on this week. But I think I share that because as you listen and hopefully reflect on what I am going to say, you'll hear the touches of all those thoughts together. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our salvation. Amen. Well, this is a great day in the life of the church, is it not? You should all give yourself a round of applause. Seriously, you should give yourself a round of applause right now. It's a great day. That was not very enthusiastic applause, I want to say. You should do that because not every church makes it to 100 years. Not every church does that. Now, you in New England think that's pretty young, but the rest of us think that's a pretty big deal. 100 years. In fact, many churches close their doors long, long before that. And it, I know that it's really a couple weeks till we get to the official marking of the day, but today, in many respects, and over the past few weeks, we have been kicking off our second 100 years. And how far this church has come from being a small kind of wayward beach community, the museum is still the original edifice down a few blocks from here, to a congregation that we know over the last weeks and months has been just overflowing. It is a great place to worship. It is a great church to serve. And as the motto on our website says, a local church with a global vision, it is so evident today all that this congregation is about. You know, as you came in, there were not only all these worship services going on, but we had people leaving to go to Pinellas Hope. I think 70-some people were leaving to go to Pinellas Hope because they'd, they'd prepared all the food for the homeless. And they're not only going to take the food there, they're going to serve the food, then they're going to stay for hours and play games and, and be with the people over there. Likewise, I'm grateful for those who arranged and all of those who participated and lended their arms to the blood drive out here. You help countless numbers of people, and all of whom you really don't know. I mean, that's an amazing witness to who and what the church can accomplish. Is I don't know, are the Midals here or are they out there? I was wondering what the final count on the sign-up was. Anybody know? Anyway, remember they told us, the woman kind of scoffed. She said, we never get more than 12 people at a church. And that's why they had to reschedule it so we could get the two big vehicles out here. So, we celebrate all those things. And we celebrate the things that are yet to come. We celebrate the things that are yet to come. We have been blessed, and this day gives evidence of it. But lest we forget, what I want to remind everyone of is that an anniversary celebrated is less about the past than it is about the future. It is less what happened than what does it mean what have we been given and where do we go from here? Because we can remember that and we can celebrate all that, but that is that. It is history. And history is not significant unless it has meaning for where we go. The biblical narrative proves that. The biblical narrative is provided. Not that we return to what was, but through the stories that were, we find courage in life through the characters of Abraham and Isaac and David and Jeremiah. Not that we become those people or we go back to those people. There are those people who try to do that. They want to go back to the past in that regard. But that's not the purpose of it. The purpose of it is to show us that real people in real life did amazing things of significance. And that if they did it, guess what? We can do it too. So what we celebrate today and what we celebrate in the next year in regards to the past hundred years, we only do it honor, we only do it justice 
if we recognize the shoulders of the saints upon whom we are privileged to stand this day. You know, we are only here because of them, and they only ask that we provide a foundation for those to come. Dr. Green, Dr. Eckert, Reverend Comrie, and all those around them who helped to make and build this place. So as I thought about what the text said, and I thought about what I should say, it really wasn't about looking at the past. It was looking about the way forward. Where do we go? What is it about? And what do we learn from this covenant theology that is shared here in the book of Genesis? What is the way forward? What is the path that we need to follow? And what are the characteristics as servants of Christ that we need to exhibit and assimilate to be as faithful in the future and as relevant in the future as this church and congregation has been in the past. I'll give you three. The first way we go forward, the first of three ways forward, is that you need to try and you need to try and you need to keep trying again and again and again. It is amazing when you read the covenant story, it's not a one-shot deal. It's not over and done. We think that somehow we have arrived, that somehow we've accomplished. It's like a graduation ceremony. We can take the diploma of faith, we hang it on the wall, and there it is, collecting dust. It's not that way. The biblical narrative is one that calls us to be continually engaged in life, engaged with God, and engaged with one another. The Bible is not a straight shot up. The Bible is a seesaw story of success and failure. Success and failure of not just people, success and failure of God. Imagine that. What God tries doesn't always work. And people say, well, why shouldn't God fix it? Why shouldn't God just make it? You know, if a God loves people, a God enters into a relationship and a covenant and trusts that they will love back. And if you love back in a partnership, then you respond in an appropriate way. Do you not? You cannot have a good marriage. You cannot have any good partnership if one person dominates the other. And this God of ours is so loving as to allow us that kind of freedom and allow into a relationship with the creation. Imagine that. That says, I'm going to try to work with you if you will only work with me. And so when you read the biblical narrative, it's not straight up. It is one that rises and falls as God tries one thing, tries another thing, tries a final thing. In the Noah narrative, we have a second creation story. The first creation didn't work with Adam and Eve, and so God says, I'm going to try it all over again. Noah, I pick you because you're righteous. I pick your family because they'll do what I want. And guess what? You got the flood, you got the ark, you got all this, and read a few chapters later, God finds Noah sitting drunk, naked under a tree. And God says, oh my... I got some work ahead of me. You know, and the story could end there. God could say, that's it. But God doesn't do that. God says, well, I'm going to back up and I'm going to try something different, something new. And the covenant goes on. It goes on with Moses. It goes on with Abraham. It goes on with Jeremiah. Each time, people struggling and each time, God remaining faithful. Try and try again. Because new times do not demand a new faith, but they demand a reinterpretation of the old faith that it might live and give again. So the lesson that I take from that is that the way forward is not the story of standing still. It is not the story of going back. It is celebrating the best of the past. The courage and the fortitude And the ability to never give in or give up that keeps you going. You know, I love that NASA astronauts have a saying, um, uh, a slogan. Does anybody know what it is? The NASA astronauts have a saying that says, the sky is not the limit. Don't you love that? The sky is not the limit. 
And in covenant theology, when we work together, when we work with God, when we keep trying and seeking and laboring faithfully, the sky is never the limit. There is ever new light to break forth from God's Word, and there is ever new work that this church is called to do, and that's what we celebrate today. Secondly, the way forward is never a way made alone. It's never a way made alone. It is made in community. Covenant means that we do it together. And you realize that the road is far too steep and the load far too heavy for any of us to manage by ourselves. You can't have a hundred voice choir with one person, can you? Anybody do that? You can't do that. And yet, in our age, what is the greatest, what is the thing we raise up the most in terms of singing? The American idol? Is it not the American Idol? And the American Idol is what? One person. It's very symbolic of our culture and our time that we seem to think that the goal is to make it to the top, to do it by ourselves, the the self-emulated individual who doesn't need anyone else. And yet the truth is the greatness the greatness that comes from when people pull together and labor together and that your strengths cover for my weaknesses and my weaknesses are made whole by your gifts of health are a very, very powerful, powerful thing. They were a powerful thing. God works with us. Did you ever stop to think about that? That's an amazing thing. That's something that sets us apart in theology for many, many other religions. That our God is not someone who manipulates, who overpowers, who dominates, but covenants with us to say we are working together to recreate and to remake our world. American Idol, a sign of the times. People in covenant, what's needed in these times. Did anybody read Manny Ramirez's Back in Baseball? Anybody read that? Manny Ramirez back in baseball. He's found God. I hope he has. I mean, truly, that's what he said. He's found God. I hope he has. But what's interesting in making it back to baseball and finding God and God leading him to baseball, uh, you know what number he chose for his jersey? (laughs) One. (laughs) I didn't read any more in the article. That was enough for me. The one in our lives and the one we find our oneness in is not us. It's God. And God calls us to work together. So the second way forward is one of unity and togetherness. And the final way forward, I would submit to you, is one of being not some, not a little, not just when it's convenient, but all the time, always, all in. If you want to be in covenant, you got to be all in. You can't be in a good marital situation when it's convenient. Well, maybe you can, I guess. I guess there are people who try that. But you can't do it. You can't be in a relationship. You can't be a good employee. You can't be a good employer. You can't be intimate with anyone and unfaithful at the same time. You're either in or you're out. And this is probably the lesson revealed in the evolution of God in the biblical story that we are told. What do I mean? I mean that in the flood, God is an outside observer. Think about this. God is an outside observer. The guy that has everything on the line is Noah. Noah is the one on the flood, and Noah is the one in the boat, and God is watching all of this. In the New Testament, that changes. In the New Testament, in Christ, we are told that God is no longer on the outside watching. God is on the inside participating. That God gets in the boat with us. And that God gets in the boat so fully, so completely, that this God is willing to lay it all on the line. This God is all in. Which is what the cross symbolizes week after week. No greater love hath anyone than to lay down their life for another. This is not a God who backs off at the end. This is not a God who says, well, if you do it, this is a God who says, 
I will do it with you, and I will do it for you. In the new covenant with Christ, God is no longer watching or observing. God is entering into our struggle. Not set apart of life, but in our lives. Jesus takes on the world with us, even in death, even to death on a cross. You see, our God does not sit outside the boat. Our God gets inside the boat. Our God is all in. So the way forward is one of complete submission. The way forward is the one of complete trust. The one way forward is the one of letting go of our need to call the shots and affirm what we say all the time, that God is God. And that's enough. Which brings me full circle. It brings me back to the beginning. The beginning where we evaluate our personal relationships with God because those things determine our relationship with one another and the future of this church. Because in covenant, we are called to look at our commitment to the divine. That's the vertical piece. And the work we are invited to do together, that's the horizontal one. And we are called to ask ourselves, what really does this covenant mean to us? What does it mean? Does it just mean that we come here and we sit and we watch and we listen and we say, oh, the choir was great or the sermon was so-so, but it was passable? (laughs) Do we do that or do we say, you know what, there's something important going on here. Like with Noah, there's a new creation beginning. Like Noah, there is work to do. Like Moses and Jeremiah and all those people who dared to stand up and say, our God is alive. There is something powerful we can be a part of. Or we can leave and we can go and we can become our own American idol here today and gone tomorrow. Here today and gone tomorrow. You know, the story's always the same. Have you ever noticed that? The story's always the same. I used to watch MTV when they were just about music. That's a long time ago, right? And they used to do these documentaries on rock stars. You guys don't know about that, huh? right? Anybody watch the documentaries on rock They're all the same. They're all the same. Uh, you get discovered. You get big. You make a lot of money. You get hooked on drugs. You go to rehab. And then you have a reunion tour. (laughs) If in the process you don't lose yourself and die. And who offers them life? Who offers the world life if not us? It's a time, friends, as we look at the good way forward the next 100 years, we ask ourselves, we ask ourselves if we are worthy of sitting in the cloud of witnesses, the great saints who have been faithful and faithful to this church. Do we see ourselves in covenant with them and in ongoing partnership with God? We have to ask ourselves, how much is the gift of forgiveness and grace and salvation and the crown of everlasting life really work? Worth And are we seeking to do that? You know, if someone says to you, here is eternal life, how do you really respond to something as magnificent as that? How much is the gift of forgiveness worth? Or do we give of our talents, our resources, ourselves, and our time? Do we do it minimally or we do it as fully as God has done for us? You see, the Christian story is about a God who is all in and a creation that is not. Which begs us to ask the question as a church, where on that spectrum are we? For in the final analysis, the way forward for any person of faith or any church that would be faithful is not built upon wishes and shallow promises. It is not. You don't stand before God at the end of your life and say, you know, I just didn't get around to it. Someday I was going to. You don't do that. For in the final analysis, the way forward is not built on those things 
It is built on nothing more and nothing less than God has promised to us God's complete fullness. Wow. That's what God offers to us because God is all in. The cross reminds us of this each and every week. The question we should take from that is, are we all in as well? Because the time to respond is not someday. It's not sometime. It's not when it's convenient. The time is now. The time is now. What'd that person say you heard, Gene? Live each day like it might be your last. Because someday it will. Are we all in? May God strengthen and bless this church as we seek to be as faithful as those giants who have served this church upon whose shoulders at this moment we stand. Amen.